In this video, I'm not only going to tell you why you should assist feed your snake with a rat tail, I'm gonna show you how. I got a snake in this bag. Ugh. Stuck. Oh, ha. Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be talking about why you should be assist feeding with rat tails. And by assist feeding, I mean if you got a snake that's not eaten yet and they seem to be giving you some trouble, why you should be using a rat tail. And I'm gonna give an example of that. I got some rats thawing out right here, right now. We still gotta wait for them to thaw out a little bit more. But once they do, we're going to be chopping off some rat's tails. I'm like the farmer's wife over here. Uh, yeah, before we get into the meat of the video, I want to give you guys a couple of updates on some stuff around here. First update is Maya. Maya, of course, being our banana or coral glow ball python who is going to be incubating her own eggs or keeping watch over her own eggs until they hatch out. She's been doing great. And much to my surprise the other day, she actually ate a rat while on those eggs. And uh, I was pretty happy about that because one of the main reasons that I like to in incubate the eggs myself is so that I can let mom get back on food pretty quickly. And if mom's going to be eaten, then I don't feel as much of a need to pull the eggs. So yeah. All right, before we get into the assist feeding with the rat tails, I'm going to take you guys out of the snake room for a moment. We're going to talk about the struggles of reptile YouTube, as this title suggests. <laughs> Also put chapter markers down below so if you want to skip ahead to uh, the assist feeding the rats or if you want to skip ahead to assist shedding a giant retic in uh, in shed that had a bad shed you could skip ahead to that I just put all kinds of little chapter markers down there because you want to you want to skip around this video <laughs> Struggles of Reptile YouTube. Let's get into it. Struggle 101, not killing myself or crashing my drone into anything while filming this opening segment. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. I love what I do. So this isn't meant to be a complaint video. I, I feel absolutely blessed to be able to do what I do and I do love it. So I'm definitely not complaining here. More, more of a reality check. Right, come on thing, let's go. Something got mauled here. Wow. Struggle one, I guess for me, is, is not so much for Reptile YouTube. It's actually the fact that I am so involved with Reptile YouTube that it, I mean, it's a huge part of this channel, right? Like reptiles are a big part. Even though this is a vlog channel, it's supposed to be about my life. I think it's fair to say that most people are here for reptile content, period. <laughs> Somebody left the box here. Pasta sauce, anyone? So most people are here for reptiles. So the struggle for me is that I like to make a lot of different content besides just content based around reptiles, if that wasn't obvious. The last weekend's video um, did horribly. And it was just a story of us, you know, running 200 miles from San Diego to LA, which if you're only interested in reptiles, then you're not gonna be interested in that video. So that video did very poorly, which is, fine because I love making that video, but it's not good for YouTube per se. Like it doesn't make the channel look like it's doing well to YouTube and its algorithms, which is, it's not. If, it's, if the video does bad, it does bad. It's not, it's not a joke. It's not some mystery of life. It's like the video doesn't do good because most people are here for reptile content. That video had absolutely zero to do with reptiles. Although there were a couple snakes in the beginning. So that's my main struggle, and I, I've been struggling with this for a while, trying to figure out the balance between, you know, doing reptile content only versus doing content that makes me happy only, which reptile content makes me happy too. I don't know if I should go down there while I'm holding the camera. 
Oh, that wasn't so bad. So I guess my question for you guys is, what would you do in my shoes? What would you do? Uh, obviously, I'm going to continue to make the content that I really enjoy making, the content that speaks to my soul, and that's going to be my, my go-to. I would like the channel to always perform well, and I think that that would mean doing basically reptile content only, which I have a, I'm struggling with the idea of that. So I'd love any feedback you guys have. Those of you that watch the channel, I know a lot of you guys are here for that assist feeding with the rat tails, and we definitely have some good reptile content for you today, but... I would just love some feedback on on my struggle with reptile youtube as it pertains to myself personally but yeah i'd appreciate it thank you all right we've got a little interlude between sharing time with Brian and rat tail assist feeding. I got a snake in this bag. Ugh. Okay, so what's going on here is this retic had a stuck shed. And so what I'm gonna do now is help her out of that stuck shed. And what I did beforehand was stick her in the snake bag, wet the snake bag down and put it in shallow water. This is my go-to technique for any snake that might have a stuck shed. Uh, why do snakes get a stuck shed? Lack of humidity or hydration is the main reason. And that's, that's generally it. So you give them a little soak afterwards and the skin comes off super easy after that. This is Patsy LaRue in here. So let's, let's get her out and, and make her nice. This is about the minimum size bag that I could use for a snake this big. And she's done a lot of the work herself. You can see right here. Come on out, Missy. Oh yes. So it was actually stuck right up to the back of her head right here. So just being in the bag and, and doing that, it, it loosened it up a bit for her. All the way up to there. Gone around. Oh no, that's even gone. Right there. That's where she got up to. And look at that, she's doing the work herself. See that? You don't even really need to help. This is the most satisfying part right here. You don't want to miss that. Oh, dang it. There you go. Look at that. Isn't it awesome how you can see all the pattern on the skin still? I think it's awesome. I think it's amazing. Some people make some really cool stuff out of snake skin. I generally just uh, toss it or if it's not in one piece, but that's just me. And now we've got a big, gorgeous, well shed out snake. Patsy LaRue, the Phantom Het Purple. Sunfire, reticulated python. All right, now we got that happening. Let's see about these rat tails. If you haven't been to the butcher's market or something like that, this, this may make you a little squeamish. If you have, this will seem perfectly normal. Three things you need, some scissors to remove said rat's tail. These are obviously not butcher scissors, they're just fiskers, but you know, whatever you have available. Carving knife, farmer's wife, did you guys get that reference earlier? Also, you're gonna need a rat. Preferably one that's already dead. Last but not least, you're going to need your snake. This snake in particular has not eaten for about a month. And this is the time when you should assist feed with a rat tail. And the why a rat tail is because the rat tail has a little bit of fat in it and it's mostly, you know, bone. It's mostly cartilage, so, but they are getting a little bit of protein, but it's just kind of getting that metabolic process started in their body, getting that digestion process, kind of like a little kickstart to their their diet, a little kickstart to their metabolism, if you will, to get them, get them hungry. They'll be like, oh, I got a little bit of fat, got a little bit of bone, I need some meat. I've done this successfully with many, many snakes. And Garrett Hartle probably likes to try and tell you that he taught me this. And usually Garrett Hartle is making stuff up. But in this case, I think Garrett Hartle did actually teach me this little technique. So what I like to do is find the very base of the tail and take it off there so they get a little bit of that fat that's 
at the at the base of the tail where it meets the body there. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is take the scissors, get in there, give a nice little snip snip, and it comes off nice and easy. And then you got kind of a nice big fatty end here for uh, sliding into the snake's mouth. Think about like how long you think your snake's stomach is, just kind of take a guesstimate. You don't want this to be too long, depending on the length of your snake and their potential stomach size. So for my snake here, I'm probably gonna take off about one third of this tail, just so it's not too long for him. Pink, and we'll take that off, and I'm gonna clean this table afterwards. The next step in the process is probably the most crucial one. It's getting the rat tail into the snake's mouth and allowing them to swallow it. Now, now, why we're using a rat tail again? I, I talked about the nutritional content. You're gonna put the base of the tail into the snake's mouth first. And the reason why is rat tails kind of have this little bit of, it's kind of like a shark skin, if you will. You know, if you rub the shark the wrong way, if you, it's kind of got these little barbs on it. And they're not gonna hurt the snake, but they're, they're gentle little barbs that really will keep the snake from trying and regurgitate that, or it, thinks, it makes them think twice about it. Once that's in their throat, they're gonna kind of like be like, well, I can't really regurgitate this very easily or, or cough it back up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, I guess what I'll do is just go ahead and swallow it. And that's what we want. Now, usually I'm doing this in a very, very dark environment to make the snake comfortable. But for the purpose of this video, we need to shine some light on the subject. So we'll see how he does. If everything goes the way that they usually do with rat tail assist feeding, this should be the last. Here we go. Now, we only feed frozen thawed here, which is something we've just done since the beginning. So th this is the next step. If the snake has refused, say, three to four attempts at a, at a feeding. And I'm not against trying to uh, feed live if, if this ends up not working, but I've never had to. Uh, this this always ends up kickstarting them and usually after one rat tail, I'll wait about a week or so and then offer their next meal. And generally they're hungry enough from that rat tail. It's got their metabolism kickstarted to where like, hey, you know what? I want more food. And then they'll, they'll just go for it. So you wanna take your snake and hold them as gently as possible. You want this to be as least stressful situation as possible. And another reason why assist feeding with a rat tail is better than assist feeding with like a whole prey item is you're not creating this fear, because there's gonna be a little bit of stress for the snake here, but you're not creating a fear of that prey item by shoving it down their throat. And it's just a rat tail, and, and it does have the same scent as what they will be eating, rat. So you've got that. But here you go, just kind of gently hold him behind the head. And I'm not even hardly restraining him at all right here. I've, I was gently worked him into my hands so that he's not even trying to fight me right now. Now, he will probably try to fight back a little bit when I start putting this tail in his mouth, but just kind of keep holding him firmly, but gently right behind the head boobs there. My head boobs, my favorite thing. And just gently kind of move it forward. And he's resisting just a tad, but just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And you kind of use the rat tail to open his mouth up. He's putting up more of a fight than um, a lot of snakes do right now, which is sometimes that's hap that happens, but you just gotta get his mouth open so you can work this tail in there. Oh, this guy is just not having it. I'm trying to keep you alive, buddy, I promise. I promise that's the deal here. Just trying to keep you alive. This is, uh, I'm mind blown. I've never had a snake work this hard to keep his mouth closed. I see you don't want to you don't want to force it too much. You don't want to hurt his little mouth. I'm gonna just try and roll it in there. See if we can roll it in the corner. Sorry, you're probably not getting a very good shot of this at home because I'm pointing more at myself so I can see what I'm doing. I don't think the bright lights are helping. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we're opening a little bit. So once you get it into his mouth, you're going to kind of twist it around. Little bit, little gentle twisting. Gentle, very gentle here is the name of the game. You wanna be as gentle as possible. You do not wanna hurt the snake's mouth or anything like that. You don't wanna hurt his throat. So you just kinda of slide it in there until you get the main part past his uh, glottis and past his, just get in there. Don't shove it all the way in. This, this next step's important. So got it in there a good ways. It's down his throat just a little bit. I can feel it down here at the base. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna gently set him down as gently as possible, kind of unwrap him from my hand here, and we'll just put him in there. And you can see right now, he's gonna try to, he started trying to regurgitate it just a little bit, but 
he's gonna soon learn that those little barbs on that rat's tail, you know, like shark skin pointing the opposite direction, are gonna make it kind of difficult for him to just cough it up real quick, which is what they can do if you try to assist feed with a whole prey item. That smooth skin on the rat or rodent or whatever you're using makes it easy for them to just slide it back out of their mouth. And it's pretty frustrating if you're just trying to help keep them alive. But here, you'll see in a second, he's kind of he kind of already decided, you know what? I am not gonna cough that thing up. It is not coming back. So what he's gonna do is eat the rest of it on his own. Now this is very important because it's getting him used to, and for the first time since he's doing so, swallowing food. And this is an important technique for them to learn to swallow food. Pretty crucial little step of life there, little buddy. Yeah, learning how to see that, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, he's gonna start taking it down now. Chomp it up, bud. Eat all your dinner or you're not getting any dessert. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. Simple as that. Dare I ask you to give me another reference quote? I know I, I spliced it up there, but there's only one place that reference could come from. Let me know in the comments down below. He's doing good. He's doing a little chop chomp. That tail's going down. And he, with it, a little bit of nutrients, a little bit of fat, some nice cartilage, some bone. And then he's gonna spend the next week digesting that thing and deciding, hey, you know what? I should do this more often. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Mmm, rat tail. What do you guys think? But look at this guy, see that? Swallowing it all the way down, being a good boy. Oh, uh, somebody's getting some pudding. Somebody's getting pudding. I'm just kidding, I don't give my snakes pudding. Don't be ridiculous. This has been a success. But hopefully you have snakes that can eat the other part of the rat. I've got no shortage of snakes that will eat this, this tailless rat. Uh, this tailless rat is not going to waste just because it doesn't have a tail. He's gonna get fed off right now. All right, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next one this Wednesday. Aloha. Oh, hi, Hilo. <laughs> Good boy. Hey, right, gotta get down here and finish getting this B roll. Doing B roll to make the videos more interesting. That's struggle in, its, in itself. Unbelievable. <sighs> it's fun though.